Yeah, I keep mentioning that if you're not watching us live, you absolutely should. We just had some bits thrown at our face. But no, then no they can watch the happening. sanitized version that we put on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine? And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, the man in the middle, the squishy, gooey, icky, middle, a little, little, little drippy, a little... <laughs> Recovering. That's one drone swing, and the man over there on the right. He's got his the nice other blue slice of bread. Hello. We're making a Jordan Oreo, Pedro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this Oreo has mayo inside of it. This Oreo looks so wee angry. But hey, man. <laughs> yeah. Arr, it's the grumpy Oreo time. But together with you watching this live on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Yes. Quite the a tiger lot. is out. Rawr. Fierce. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with fingernails. It's like, yeah, that'd be a good. I was like, I'd break that shit off, man. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that, that's what you should do. You spend the entire month of December with like press on nails doing the show. Like, Fuck yeah. that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 Learn how to touch type with like the tips of the nails only. <laughs> no, man. My brain immediately went to like, I could tape pencils. I'm with erasers, like no, 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 do, do, do the Wolverine claws, right? Something yeah, like yeah. that, man. Dude, uh, quite a bit to talk about tonight. You know, we're definitely going to be talking about Arc. We're going to be talking about AMD and Steamy Deck stuff. But first, we like to play a bit catch up because, gentlemen, I have discovered an amazing hack. This one simple trick to drop your CPU temps by about ten C. Just easy to do. Uh, open the side of the case. <laughs> now I want both of you to talk over each other one more time and see if I can suss it out. <laughs> open the side of the case. No, no, no. Valid, <laughs> no. valid strat, valid strat. Submerge in pickle brine. No, not not so valid strat. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is like one of those like fucking really moments. So uh, a while back. I put some, uh, what is it, like a 360 rad into the thread rubber, thread booper. And I put it in and I was like, you know, there's the moral debate of like, do you have it suck dead? Do you have it blown out? Do you put it on the front? Do you put it on the top? But I was still suck in that. Suck versus blow. Yes. Yeah. We're in that phase. And initially I had it set up to uh, take air from inside of the case, blow it out the top, which is fine, you know? So I had the intakes and I had the fan, you know, I got uh, 140s on this big chungus case and. So I had two 140s in the front, 140, and it was just sucking from the back and the front, blowing out the top. I swapped that configuration because remember we talked, I was like, the t I have a glass desk. And I'm like, that glass is really warm where it's um, mm -hmm. blowing where up on Where the uh, exhaust is pointed to. <laughs> exactly. And I'm thinking like, I'm going to break this desk anyway at some point. I don't need help with this. So I flipped it back around. You know, took the fans out, flipped it up. Been running fine. Always been running a little warm though. And like right at the front of the radiator, I could reach down. And I always thought it was just because the way it was like the air, not the air, but the water was circulating further away from the pump. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's where the heat likes to chill out. And it was always like real warm. And I got to thinking about it. And a couple of days ago, like, let me just cut the fans up. So I cut the fan up on the back and I have knocked to a fans and they only go up to 800 RPMs because they're the silent ones. And I was like, let's just make sure this thing cranked, have it cranked. I'm in the back of the case doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Like, is, is there some airflow going on? Right? Yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? Flip that around. I'm like, mother. <laughs> right. So when we flipped the fans for the AIO, we didn't flip that back fan. So ah, it's, uh, oops. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been sucking the entire time. It's, it's been sucking it into the case. and then, so It's, it's just all been, positive pressure all the time. Yeah. Oh, baby. Uh, yeah. Dust free. So, yeah, I flipped that thing around and it's like, like, okay. And I thought that was stupid enough to have to publicly admit to it. So there you go. How about you, Jordan? <laughs> I, I I can squat again. This has been fun. I haven't been able to squat due to like knee tendonitis for like a month now. So I've been rehabbing it and now I can do it again. So I can sit down and get back up with, with purpose and intent. That's, so, that's my, that's my, that's my exciting update for the week. Toronto better watch out with Jordan and his new pogo stick. Yeah. I'm going to jump over the CN tower. I'm going to turn the CN tower into my pogo stick. 
It's going to be quite a trick. And all the other um, American cities that are in <laughs> Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, they are, man. I mean, if you've watched Sci Fi Channel, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, pretty much. New, New York, uh, LA. Actually, LA <laughs> is more of a, Usually they, they, uh, they do uh, Vancouver for LA, but, you know, oh, whatever. Okay. Pedro, you got a new old. Yes. A well, it's not that old compared to the previous version. Uh, it's the duet. That and, it's ancient. Uh, it's like nine <laughs> years old, man. Yeah. Uh, it's the, uh, the, as I learned, there are two versions of the Apugi Duet 2. Uh, this one, which is the duet for Mac, PC, and iOS devices. And there's the actual Duet 2. The difference, the, the yeah, the uh, actual physical difference between the two doesn't exist it's just the packaging the, the, the this is this box and there's the one that says duet two it warms my heart that i could have told you that and you had to research <laughs> it <laughs> but yes uh, uh and yeah uh, much like the uh original duet it worked out of the box uh there was someone uh hitting me up on where it's like yeah i have one too but the um uh, the screen doesn't actually display anything it just stays on the apugi logo yeah but my screen actually has the uh, little bouncy vu meters which i spend more time than i should just looking Pedro, at it are you <laughs> implying that it's 2022 and if you can't get audio to work on linux it's probably not linux's problem I don't know. I, I did my best to try and kill the audio doesn't work on Linux meme. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hear you. What were you saying? Huh? Yes. <laughs> so you just uh, picked up out of the box. I sent you a utility in Discord earlier this week. Yes. Uh, the For the stuff that you can't do with the uh, little... Um, Phantom power. Yeah. Boopy knob, like Phantom power or dimming or a few other things. Those um, take control. Take control on GitHub, which is the link that Ven uh, threw at me on discord it's like try that yeah it's also yeah, my favorite track out of the uh, control soundtrack take control <laughs> yeah i was busy that day because the the way i was going to play this out throughout the day i was like hey pedro see if it works with your condenser mic i want to see what your level is and just leave them with that because that would have required you to find a way to cut the phantom power i'm like i can't cut on phantom power hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, i don't have that here's the app here you go yeah, no, uh, I built it. I had to build uh, WX Widgets 4 uh, uh, because I didn't like the version from the repo. Uh, so that took a while. But, uh, uh, WX Widgets, just... Yeah. Yeah. And the But yeah, once it shows up, it's like, yeah, that looks like a WX window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you click on things and things happen and the display updates accordingly. So very good. That's very good. <laughs> it works. Pretty nice. Uh, it's always nice when you just plug something and it does work. Uh, no. <laughs> unlike the horse yeah well i mean the horse has lost all of its ports they've all sort of collapsed in on itself as it became this gelatinous mass over time it's been 10 years i think we should probably upgrade the horse it's the steam <laughs> 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 happy slaps hey <laughs> hi slap <laughs> No, the, the happy slaps uh, uh, distracted me. But yes, Wait there's a, a new update for the so Steam. So this leads um, one to an intellectually roll back. What are, what are the un un unhappy slaps? They're, they're, they're called extra. They're the called crappy slaps. 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 What about uh, the small crappy slaps? slaps. <laughs> What's the difference between a smack and a slap? Philosophy uh, and shit. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, the, no, the, that, the that's an existential question right there. Uh, I guess. But yeah. If you if you have uh, a Steam Deck and you've been running the betas like I have, you've probably noticed that uh, if you wrong were, button nope. each week, it takes <laughs> if me you one were, button to get calibrated. <laughs> if you were say uh, moving your character in one direction and then you let go of the analog stick a little too quickly, okay. That your How many people read that as uh, fish stick? Yes. All right. <laughs> that your character but would are, immediately turn West? back around. Well, that's not the case anymore because uh, Valve has actually uh, changed the the way that Steam input handles the flick stick. So stick it, um, fucking. Yeah, it basically reduced. Uh, that's what they did. They reduced the polling rate from 240 hertz to 120 hertz. So that if you do uh, let go of the analog stick and it bounces back just enough for it to register just a single pole as in the other direction, now it won't do that. So. It, it also has the, 
Yay. They, they, <laughs> they also have a check for that as well if it rebounds a little too hard just because you physically hit the joystick a little too hard. Mm-hmm. So uh, I do have to ask uh, real quick. I mean, is rage flicking a problem? I mean, for a certain percentage of the population, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, when you when you when you get a little mad at someone, you you want to rage <laughs> I, I'm just saying it. Like if I'm like, oh, I'm so upset and got. <laughs> It's it's it's, right. it's, it's 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 like it's it's like an angry fap, right? Well, uh, the the other the other thing they uh, they added to this update is if you're uh, plugging in a USB hub to your Steam Deck because you want to do some couch co-op, because so many games these days are multiplayer but don't offer any sort of online functionality. So hey, you can bring your you can bring your Steam account over to someone's house, uh, and hey, now the uh, now external controllers will register properly as well, which is always which is also nice, I guess, for people yeah. who want to use it as a okay, straight up computer, not. A Handled. Yep. Pretty dope. Now, this next thing you're going to talk about, Jordan, I didn't expect to see. Like, uh, uh, okay, honestly, when you hear Rockstar and Steam Deck, you're like, does the in- does this Senate send was get fucked or something like that? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I would have expected a brand new announcement of a new version of GTA 5 exclusively for the Steam Deck that you can you purchase say now. That. Yes, but um, um, but this is from support.rockstargames.com. All the notes to this is in our show notes. But they put out an interesting uh, thing yeah. on uh, on uh, May 25th. Uh, people have gotten wind. Of it, but uh, support for Rockstar Games titles on Steam Deck. And so th- they give you a bit of a three step process. Number one, establish if your problem is actually a Steam Deck problem or if it's, you know, happening on across other platforms. If it is, then it's definitely a Rockstar problem. Uh, to help narrow down the Steam Deck issues, go to the support forums. If you can't get any help from there, go to Steam Deck. Uh, call up the uh, the Steam Deck support line. And, but if uh, this is a game that is listed as verified compatible on the Steam Deck, looks like Rockstar is going to take on support. I My theory is that, you know, I think they're probably paying Code Weavers or Valve for support. So if they're going to say that they're going to take that on, they're prob- they probably have some like intake process for at least opening up tickets or for at least validating issues and then opening up tickets with Valve because, you know, they're not going to actually fix their fucking software. They don't have enough developers to do that. Um... But yeah, it's it's nice to see that they're they're at least pretending to support Linux. Yeah, or uh, you can take the M Fox Dog uh, approach and say that if you're going to contact the Rockstar Game Support, it's so that they can go back to Valve and say, no, nah, no, nah, it's not verified. You don't do that. <laughs> but Gentlemen, yeah, I that's... think what it really is is like there's an intern with a Steam Deck. I'm sure the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe a QA tester. <laughs> <Steam>. Yeah. <laughs> no. Or 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 one of, one of the executives got their hand on one. And I mean, it's yeah. a personal one. They didn't buy for them. Like, hey. Oh yeah. Yeah. So one last little bit of this, we wanted to cover it because uh, we had a discussion in the pre pre super shows. And if you're a patron, go back and listen. Uh, D brand. In my head, I knew what a D brand was. I knew it was a thing. It existed in the lexicon. For some reason, I thought. D brand was PS4, but maybe controllers. And turns out it's so much more because they were the ones that made the kill switch. And we talked about the kill switch just because that's a cool name, right? Like, mm-hmm. foul. That's what you should have called the Steam Deck, the kill switch. Me a little too much on the nose. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Turns out D brand had a little problem. Uh, so, popular skin and case maker, Project Kill Switch. Da 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 da. You see this little thing? That's the kickstand that came with a kit. Now, it unfortunately did not adhere itself with Scandinavian witchcraft. No, they used a far more mundane version of magic. They used a magnet. Problem is, this I almost called it the Switch. The Steam Deck has a fan. And the fan's not a fan of fans or magnets? Yeah. Check this out. Watch this. Can you see that? Ah, uh, <laughs> they don't move. <laughs> Now it move. Watch. Okay, Watch. science. Yes. Look at yeah. that. Hmm. Go Oop. figure. <laughs> do, do you want to say like oopsie doodle? Because I, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. That's a hella strong magnet. How strong, Vin? We're we're talking like it drops the speed by like fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred RPM when you attach it. Yeah. The the mm. during their testing, yeah, the fan was uh, uh, spinning at about three thousand, four thousand uh, RPM. And it dropped down to 1,500. It's like, 
Wow, yeah, that's, that's that, a bit. That, that's that's <laughs> not good on a on a thermally constrained package like the Steam Deck. And you got you got to think like at no point throughout testing did they ever like run into this problem, or did they just kind of slap out a design? They're like, yeah, Steam Deck skins, Steam Deck stands, we're good to go, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I I you know I wanted the uh, kill switch case ever since they announced it because it looks really nice and it's rubber so it will be very very protective uh and the kickstand is very much one of the selling points so i was thinking yeah let's just get one of the clip ones instead but apparently uh as we discovered during the uh, the pre-show uh <laughs> We, um, uh, I went to the deep red site and I actually clicked on the thing and they said, yeah, due to, you know, realizing the cock of what we made, uh, we, we're retooling the whole thing and we're going to make it actually clip on instead of using the magnet. So I'll wait. And you don't worry I'll about wait. it, man. Deep red's <laughs> serious. Uh, you know, this is first before you know, nobody else has got this, but we do have a look at their engineering department actively working <laughs> on uh. <laughs> fucking magnets how do they work getting everything <laughs> sorted out miss, miss, missing missing oh wait no, there's the nose that's fallen off i see yeah yeah <laughs> too easy to do couple of new games this week pedro yes and uh both of them uh the devs decided to drop us some keys so thank you both very much in advance Ta uh terra ventura uh is the first one and it is Basically a lower budget looking uh, Path of Exile because lower budget. You throw what they did. They, they said his keys. They didn't like slide you twenty quid or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, none of the keys that we get we actually get paid for, which is unfortunate. I could use the money, but uh, yeah, the uh, the little blurb says guide the shipwreck hero through mysterious land of dungeons and castles. Yeah, that that's Path of Exile, and um, I don't know if this or is done or Dungeons and Dragons or. Dungeons in anything really? Yeah, well, there's got a, a dragon in it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it. Uh, I don't know if it's actually built with the Flare RPG engine. It has the look that it could very well be, but I haven't actually installed it yet. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, they did send us three keys, so uh, we will be having a look at it at some mm. point. Yeah, it's it's it is very Diablo-y though. Uh, one mm -hmm. thing to note: the maps aren't random. Well. Not random like Diablo style where they have like a bunch of the pre-made tiles and they rejigger the order, but the loot is all randomized. So I guess it's kind of Borderlands style. No, no co-op though. No online uh -huh. multiplayer. This is going to be single player only, which, you know, not, not necessarily a bad thing, but it's always nice to see like your ARPGs have some co-op because, you know, you might get a little bored and lonely clicking in the darkness by yourself. This is, this is true. You know, but when you're in like an ARPG, I can definitely see the single player experience with it. And I'm like, you know what? Hey, probably yeah. gonna have a good time. Nothing like our next game. Man, will <laughs> no. be crushed. I'm crushing your skull. Yeah. So you know that uh, you know that part in co-op games where you accidentally kill your friends because you pressed a button when they were standing on the wrong thing. Well, someone has made an entire PvP game about that. Uh, so yeah, part of, part of this is running around. You can shoot each other. There's also traps you can try to lure your friends into, but only friends that you have sitting right next to you because. <laughs> It's local multiplayer only. Dun, dun, dun. They do say remote play together, but fucking stop that, people. Seriously. No. Ah, stop that's my it. crutch. Yeah. If you're going to be making multiplayer games in 2022 onwards, they need to be online. You can have couch co-op as an option. D there, this is not to say you have to do entirely away with couch co-op, uh -huh. but you need to bare minimum provide online yeah, support. It needs network support, especially, you know, after the thing that everyone, you know, got sick and had to be locked down to try and stop the spread of, you know. Nope. <laughs> uh -uh. Some of us great. are still locked down because of immunocompromised folks. So yeah, like, yeah, don't, don't make people come to my house. <laughs> Please developers of Made to Be Crush don't come game. to my house. Let's, Here's what I really want to know, though. I mean, how do you go all the way through? Because this has been in development, I'm assuming, over the last at least week. Maybe a year, maybe two years, however long you've been working on it. Do you go through a development cycle saying, yeah, this is going to be, you know, like IRL meets space play, multiplayer? I'm like, the hell are you thinking? How do you do that? Like, did, did you not see the Steam Deck that came out where everyone's going to be like playing on the go? They're not going to be doing yeah. couch co-op sitting next to each other. Even if you're going to be doing co-op with your roommate or your family, you're going to be doing it online. I mean, yeah, that's highly inefficient from your homeland or anything like that. Just be realistic though. You're going to be playing against each other online yeah, or with each other online, not having, and to what you said, Jordan, I mean, couch co-op, like the Steam thing, 
is a curiosity still. It's not a replacement. It's especially if you're dealing talking to people in another country and you want to play the game with them, like myself and Jordan have tried and Jordan and Venn have tried. There's significant, like almost a full seconds worth of delay between you touching the stake and it actually moving. It's not doable. Well, I don't know. I, I don't have too hard of an opinion against it because it did hurt Jordan twice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does cause me extreme pain when yeah. it blasts your ears at max volume with your friend's audio. That's always good. Things have definitely gotten better. But plus, on top of that, uh, this is not brought up enough. I mean, the overhead of having to run that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you get a system it, it that is, is just borderline able to run something, there goes your borderline. Yeah, yeah and it, it is just screen capture, right? It's not doing anything fancy, so... Well, I mean, they, they've worked with like Vulcan capture and stuff like that. Recently. Oh yeah, I know it, it's, yeah. it's, it's hardware accelerated and like Kodak compressed to high fucking hell to make that like actually remotely playable. Yeah, no remove intended. the latency as much as possible. But if you're across an entire ocean, it's not doable. No. <clears throat> yeah. It just so makes mi- me want to do an entire series where we try to play like rhythm games. No, we, we 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 need to we need to do like Halo mass like split screen Halo over remote play. That's okay. oh, is there like a LAN game that's LAN only multiplayer that we can play over? I mean, hmm. LAN, LAN we could just set up a VPN. That's that's not yeah, a we could, but it wouldn't be as hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like I'm trying to think of like trying to play uh, FP. Play, no. email us, <laughs> let us know. So I was very excited about this game when it first came out. I was. Um, Jordan, you can tell me about X Zodiac. You sounded like you were going to finish your sentence. I, there, I'm too but. excited, man. <laughs> All right. Well, then let me finish it for you. X Zodiac. They got a new version out. It's not 0.623. Uh, and it has some important updates like cloud save support, which, you know, we're talking about that Steam Deck. People want to pick up and go uh, where they left off. So making sure that you tick that Steam cloud save button is important. Very important. Um, they also added a new point and click uh, control mode. So before you only had to use a controller or, uh, I guess, keyboard. But now you can use mouse to aim and point and shoot. Uh, Mouse will take priority over everything else, so keep that in mind if you're accidentally going to elbow it. Um, And yeah, and so a couple minor fixes, um, but you know, shit, it's, they're they're working on it, right? Uh, They are, and that was something I was genuinely worried about. I bought this like the day, or the week it was in um, one of our episodes, and when it was announced, I'm like, fuck yeah, Star Fox, never going to play Star Fox back in the day. And plus, Pedro was like, oh man, yeah, Space Space Area. Right there. <laughs> so, like, I mean, this is going to get, uh, we, we joke, but it's like, somebody going to sue somebody over this. Uh, <laughs> but, it, I mean, it looks the part. Plus, it's got, like, another racing mechanic, and you're playing as a Saiyan because you got a tail, and that, that's kind of interesting. Now, I got to say, uh, I haven't played it in a couple of months because there hasn't been an update, and I went back to play it, and, like, they're, they're, de- they're working on dialing the fun in. I know that's a very broad thing to say, but they are. Trust me on this. They still need to do some work on, like, that intro tutorial just right out of the gate and it's still in early access. It's missing things like they're telling you to do stuff in the tutorial without button prompts, which you kind of need because it's got all the controllers mapped to all the buttons and all that. Maybe pick well, it up. Yes. Still in early access. So, it, you know, well, I mean, it's a nine ninety nine too. Yeah. Yeah. So I want a uh, new mode that puts it in like 15 FP- FPS. So it'd be like the, <laughs> original uh snes version of uh, star Fox. you can you can do that on the steam deck with the uh, overlay you can yeah you it can down. and they actually fixed if you were playing it out on the steam deck 16 10 screen uh the backgrounds were just not working properly they fixed that now so there you go okay. on them <laughs> i mean it, it's got the feel of um i guess like oh. rose tinted glasses of what you imagined star fox originally was without going back and playing the original going oh no this is horrible well so, yeah n- now now it runs on a modern computer and not like hardware limited super yeah. nintendo right so <laughs> right and they did a good job capturing the look too so mm-hmm. yeah I, I look forward to like going through it I've, it's been worth nine bucks so far just out of entertainment this other game has fucking delivered way more entertainment than we never the paid horse for yeah yeah <laughs> ultimate chicken horse we were talking about that in the pre-shows and man uh, if you don't know about it, which you, did Ultimate Chicken Horse ever really get its due? No, they, they had a Kickstarter and it was reasonably successful. And then uh-huh. it kind of released to minimal fanfare. But it was a, it's a YouTubers game. picked it up 
and it managed to actually sell some copies, though not nearly as much as it deserves. And I think in all fairness, I mean, this game came out in 2016. It it was nigh impossible to have a competitive scene for it, really, based on just how the game mechanic is, how it works. But they had to do an update. The last update for Ultimate Chicken Horse was an update to say, we're done doing updates. The game yes. is finished. And uh, this one is Ultimate Chicken Horse Patch 1.9. Oopsie doodle. Because uh, the both the services the game used for its online content and multiplayer had to be replaced. So something happened there. But they yeah. did go through. And, you know, they're like, hey. That's the thing. All I'll say, you know, I went through on the control find. Can we get eight players, please? I know you don't want to hear it, but I want eight players because there's only four players right now. A couple other things thrown in there too, Pedro, because we were worried about the maps, right? Yeah, there. That's uh, the fun uh, part about the game. Like, yeah, hundreds it's of thousands the maps, of maps. and the, like. There were there was a, a fairly active community building custom maps, and a lot of them were really really good. They still managed to salvage uh, two hundred thousand of the custom maps which is impressive we've seen game companies just straight up not give a damn when it comes to stuff like this oh it's dead okay it's back up again but all the custom stuff is gone now so that is awesome actually preserving a bunch of the stuff that people made for the game that's it, it is it is a bit of a hard cut though uh, because they had to migrate services. User maps don't necessarily go one to one. So I hope you're happy with your old leaderboard uh, high score names because that's what that yes. leaderboard is going to be stuck with until you beat your old high score. So mm -hmm. yes, it's all part of their plan. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hell, it might work. You well. Know? Coming up next, we can finally buy ARC video cards in October. For how much? Well, we have to go on an adventure. There's, there's a quest before we can find out the actual number. Yeah, I keep mentioning that if you're not watching us live, you absolutely should. We just had some bits thrown at our face. But no, then no they can't idea watch the happening. sanitized version that we put on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine Disney Plus fucking Linux Gamecast? Uh... Here's the problem. I can imagine trying Make to edit it. that. Give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Mickey's like, yeah, we gotta replace that Pedro guy. <laughs> give, give me some of that arch, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, if you if you want to help get us big enough or to I'll the point where knees. Disney has to buy us out, head on over to <laughs> patreoncom slash Gamecast. Fill our coffers with your hard-earned money and lucre. It's the intermission time. No, it's the plugging time. Yeah, um, sign up for our Discord. You can get some cool stuff at uh, one buck um, or uh, one buck a week. You can get access to our Discord channel. You can also get access via subbing to us on Twitch, twitchtv slash Gamecast. I do want to point out that takes a minute though. Like, um, if you want to hop into our discord i've noticed mm. we've got a couple of people uh like patron for whatever we have no control over this by the way so yeah patron bot is like real quick with syncing the twitch bot can take somewhere between immediately or a week yes i i i've i've been learning about the magic of oauth <laughs> so i understand why that is happening now which is <laughs> terrible they, they they just need to run the job more than one time a day but anyways yeah um just be, be a little patient uh and if you can't get into our discord contact uh patreon support because they're the people who actually run that pedro shit. mateus on twitter he'll be able to uh, <laughs> contact michael larable <laughs> at pharonix.com tell him your linux yes. cast problems tell and he will him, fix them tell for him you. to contact pedro yes absolutely <laughs> um yeah but Wait. uh if you <laughs> tim sweetie at Tim Sweeney at Ferox. Yeah, no, Tim Sweeney can't contact me because he blocked me. He'll unblock <laughs> you. You're, you're, you're going to get a message he can email tomorrow. You. You, your phone he is going to yeah, ring. He still and he's going to be that. like, <laughs> your phone's going to ring and you're going to be like, hello? See, we're like, even joking about that. Pedro. But I, I still have a DM thread with Tim Sweeney. So this is not out of the realm of possibility, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think after uh -oh. me implying that uh, basically his sense of irony was all but dead. And he doesn't. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and then he went and dried his tears yeah. in his pile of money. Which, by the way, Patreon, Discord, get in there. <laughs> RSVP to game streams. I do Back for Blood with Ven on Thursdays. Ven does Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. You can join in, play with us. Uh, I know uh, our latest Patreon, uh, Dance and Joe, Dins and Joe, Young and Blow, Design Only Joe. Seven Joe. Yes, yeah. I'm uh, Joe, man. Design designer Joe's for your for your pants. Uh, he he's uh, he became a Patreon so that he can play some back for blood yes. with us. Um, yeah, so uh, 
uh, what, what else do you get from uh, signing up on Patreon? You get access to the show notes. You get your name in the credits at varying heights, depending on what level you donate. Um, and hell, if you give us enough money, you can even get on a show. You saw that like when Ven switched to the intermission box, there was like, there was like an empty box. You could fill that hole. You could fill our hole, that people. That could be you. That would be a horrible <laughs> idea. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What, what else we got? We got a store, store.linux game. Oh, cast. we do have the uh, corporate overlord. Yeah. Yes, we we do we do we gotta we gotta think uh, we gotta think Unoid. Oh no, I was talking about like we legitimately have a corporate overlord uh, tier. Oh yes, that's right. We do have oh, a corporate yes. overlord. <laughs> yes, that, that, that got added in. Uh, yeah, we got a we got a store as well. Store at LinuxGameCast.com. Continue filling our coffers by covering yourself with LGC merch. That's yeah, sure. Uh, we we got we got a wish list as well. If you go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the support button. I have a wish list. Jill has a wish list. Pedro has a wish list. Uh, Oh, mine, mine didn't update. I, I put a new processor on there. Uh, did and you, I when, when, <laughs> wait a minute. When did you put it on there? Like before we went live? I want to say. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. There it is. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> buy, buy, buy me a 5950X. I really need it for cooking eggs. Yeah, um, I have a 5800X on mine, so that's a bit cheaper. Yeah. Speaking of <laughs> See, look stones. at you fucking peasants. No, no. Let's look at the studio. See, that what you need. <laughs> Is a 7282 from like four and a half years so ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Hexadecacore. Uh, speak, speaking of uh, wish lists, um, Ven, you got something. You got a NVMe drive from Unoid. Yeah, I which did. Which means I guess he's got to go up on the on the thing behind you. He does. And there, there's going to be a whole ceremony for that next week when I find those fucking markers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, they, they, they all got snacked on. I got it right here. I got it right here. Look at it. It's brilliant. It's using this brand new uh, state-of-the-art technology. It's something that just came out. It's called PCI Express 3.0. <laughs> Not even a Gen 4? <laughs> See, okay. The reason I bring this up, um, I think you know what it was asking about some audio stuff. I'm like, hey, by the way, we have a uh, thing on our web zone. It just tells you about all of our audio stuff. You know, everything in here is itemized. And he's like, oh, that's cool. Then I got a message back. And it's like, yo, so uh, what, do you, what do you think about... Uh, Changing that out for a PCI Express 4. <laughs> Man, these are sacrificial drives, bro. <laughs> don't, don't, don't spend more than you need to on them. Right. <laughs> it's like, let's go for cheap. And this has been on the market for a long time. I didn't get this for any other reason. That's two terabyte. These are like, when you think you can get a two terabyte NVMe drive for like under 200 bucks. That's yeah. It's, <sighs> it's, it's, it, again, you can get NVMe drives cheaper for their SATA equivalents now. And it kind of blows my yeah. mind. And here's the thing. You look look on the bright side, you know what? If anything ever goes wrong with that, you can like deliver the most epic. I fucking told you so. <laughs> <laughs> I Call fucking it. told you. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Intel is kind of delivered. Uh, I fucking told you so to everyone who doubted. <laughs> Anyone who would ever besmirch the uh, Intel anyway, Arc. Yeah. Arch is the, up. The, the Archmage. Intel finally has announced the Alchemist desktop graphic card. That's right. Old Pat, man. I tried to watch uh, bits and pieces. That was a hard thing to watch, everyone, because they didn't have like a good live stream. So I had to watch people restreaming. And it was this, had the option of watching a really cool Korean dude. And, you know, but he did have English subtitles up for the stream itself. So that was watchable. Or this other dude who was streaming it in English, but I didn't know he was on the stream. And neither did anybody else, apparently, for the first 30 <laughs> minutes when he was like, oh, yeah, just out of nowhere. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, who are you? Who is this Plus person? the long con. Very good. <laughs> um, he, he continued on with that. But most importantly, everybody, we got some pricing information. Uh, and it turns Yay. out Intel indeed got medieval with that pricing. Starting at 329 for the 8 gig version, the A770 limited edition is 350 which is apparently... 16 gigabytes only. I was told by Ken Addison from mm -hmm. Intel on Twitter, but I was like, it'd be really interesting to have some pricing information in the announcement. And he's like, it's in the first paragraph. I think Josh told me that to which I uh, didn't have time to retort of like, no, it isn't. It just says uh, limited it. Oh, right. We're just supposed to know that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I figures um, the one that people wanted would be the limited edition. Oh, I'm not even that. It's like, <laughs> I missed that memo. And I would like to think we're kind of kept abreast of this. I've not just seen a regular plain ass chart. It's like, this is this and this with the specs on it. Yeah. I guess Intel's like, we don't make those kind of charts, man. We're not used to it. We need some more asterisks on this. They've never made a press release before. So like, a couple they, they of don't brown know lines. Yeah, a little around. brown line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing though, man. Um, at least this is going to come out. And you know what? For the price, 
and the neat factor. I could probably justify picking one up for 350, 16 gigs, you know, like maybe as fast as 3060 ish. Sometimes that, that seems to be the uh, the promise there. And if they can deliver it for 350, that's not a bad price. I can't get it if you want a coder. It's not a bad price. It's, it's still it's still 450 Canadian though, plus minus Canada tax. So it's still a little pricey. But like, here, here's here's the thing. Dep depending on what AMD uh, announces their prices for, I'm I'm definitely expecting it may be cheaper to get an Arc and a new AMD card than just get a 4080. <laughs> I mean, it possibly could be. No, I think like a lot of you, I was like, can you imagine if this released six months ago? <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you can get your hands on it. It would, they'd just be gone instantly. Yeah, they would have disappeared immediately as soon as they launched. <laughs> now, what you brought up is kind of the thing because we're waiting on that November announcement from AMD because uh, the 16 gigabyte at 350, that bar has just been dropped down. Mm-hmm. So, like, AMD, you're going to have to, like, do a double debate or something along those lines. And, Pedro, you're interested in, like, the one I that want... barely counts as a GPU, right? Yeah, the, the A380. I want that one, but, like, low profile so it doesn't get in the way of the fans for the um, 6700 XT. And just have that as a dedicated AV1 encoder. Just for what? For when I have time to stream again. Or for actually... Uh, encoding the videos for the chairs for example <laughs> it, it has uses it'll find use <laughs> i like that idea here's what i really like intel now the two problems with that is like the price point of <laughs> i immediately go to like how alive do you have to make the organ and before it counts as a whole human same thing with the gpus how much of the gpu brains do you have to attach to that encoder before you might as well just build the rest of the uh, gpu but like a dedicated pci express 4x1 accelerator would be dope as hell for like under 200 bucks but you know i'm sure intel would much rather you buy the uh, amount of silicon they've already printed out for it now the price is right it is it, this is unless the linux drivers are just going to be an absolute dumpster fire 350 for something with more vram than 3060 that allegedly is going to trade blows with it that's a, that's pretty much an instant buy especially with a 40 series announcement of like get wrecked pricing from Jensen and <laughs> look forward to that 500 bucks for the 46 yeah. pricing man. Uh, and here's the, here's the thing with me. One of the reasons I might be able to justify picking one up is, you know, the gaming is one. I know Linux Emcast, right? That's how we started, but more and more and more, I, I consider myself a full snack content creator. So I look at different things than just like, can I play games? Cause what, what do I look for in games? I'm like, can this thing play 1080p games in a window? Done is uh, that's the life I live now. But what I want to know is how's this little guy going to shake down with OBS? How's it going to shake down with DaVinci Resolve? What that workflow is going to look like? And, you know, is Intel going to pull an AMD? They're like, oh, yeah, if you, you want some of that, you need to install our official binary drivers. But so they never that, had one. To yes, start yeah, and the, the, uh, you say that. <laughs> and they've never had a dedicated. G okay, maybe they kind of did that they one time, but that one doesn't. Count. And yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 new Mesa release does have the Arc drivers in there. So you know, you may you may need to download some additional like blobs or something as part of it. I don't know. I guess I guess we're gonna have to wait and see until someone like running Linux actually gets their hands on them. But yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'm I am cautiously optimistic for the the drivers, at least for. Getting to a login screen, I think you will be able to do that much. Well, yeah, I, I think I mean, here's what curious. I can go from. Here's what I can go from. We've seen the issue with the Arc drivers for the 380 mm -hmm. on Windows. Mm -hmm. On Windows, and by that we mean they can technically kind of get it to function sometimes on uh, mm. DX12 and Vulkan, <laughs> or just using the configuration utility on Windows. Yeah, <laughs> clicking the buttons does nothing. No, like, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm not poo-pooing it, but I'm not going to run out this is going to save anything. It's like, eh, hold, like, 350 is enough to pick one up and start fucking around with. And here's the other things we need to know. Is it going to play nice with X versus play nice with Wayland? How's it going to work in my minimum three monitor setup? How's it going to handle that? That all comes down to the OpenGL things. Uh, I think there was an issue with the A380 when it, it first got released that the Vulkan performance was really bad, but they did fix that. So 
hopefully it won't be an issue with the A750 the, 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 uh, and the 770. The other thing to consider, too, is that, like, unlike in NVIDIA land, the drivers for uh, Windows on Intel and the drivers for Linux on Intel, completely different. No mm-hmm. no shared DNA between the two of them. NVIDIA has the same core driver and a different shim for every operating system. But yeah, so this is this is going to be... We're going to see how good the, uh, the, the Intel driver team is. Or I at least the, the Mesa team is. I got a question for both of you. Oh? Mm-hmm. I want to know. I want to know, Acer, I mean Predator Gaming. <laughs> Which one of these fans did you have a surplus of? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Probably the glowy one. Yeah, do no, no, one I think them. it's the blower one. <laughs> the glowy or the blowy, which is yeah. It? You, you mean you mean the blower design with another fan in the fucking way? That one. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that uh, that's design. very much the like hybrid Nvidia type of situation with the pass through fan and then a blower on. The GP <laughs> might hope. No, this is Predator. This is Acer's gaming division. Intel Arc A770 is going to be available, and what can only be described as which fan did you have a surplus of model? Um, two <laughs> eight pin. Marine. Two That's eight pin going connectors. to make an interesting noise. Um, maybe it'll make less of a noise. See, th- these are there's so many questions we have. Like, how many dBs is this, is this thing going to be? Uh, screeching. Like with the noise when it gets loaded up, or is it going to be nice and quiet? All these questions I got, baby. Intel, what I'm saying is, send me one. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had many Acer laptops, uh, and they always fail spectacularly at one point or another. So I've had many Acer monitors, <laughs> and they work great until you ram your head through them. So <laughs> uh, you know, Acer monitors are. Uh, yeah, I got two Acer. Mo- Acer, send me one. Um, but the uh, yeah, Acer monitors are great until you look up a model name for anything. Um, yeah, I've not had it outside of that. Uh, yeah, this, I don't think Acer is known for their um, discrete GPU market. I no, but I think as an AIB partner, this is probably the first time. Well, I mean, I mean, there, there's lot, there's lots of room now. Now that uh, now that EVGA EVGA is, going. is exiting the space, yeah, there's there's a bit of a vacuum. So if so if Acer or MSI or Gigabyte they want to step up their add-in board game, yeah, like now yeah, now's the time. It. Yeah, Mattel, come on, there's an opportunity here. Steve, oh, Steve, back design us wheels. One, <laughs> no, no, no. We we need to put Steve in charge of building a graphics card. Just so he ends up building, a, he ends up building like a Honda hatchback too. I heard graphics car, you yeah, guys. No, no, it's gonna have legs sticking out of it. Please no, bring back the. Yeah. I want Pedro to have to decide whether or not to get that or eat. <laughs> you can eat yeah. video cards. They're not very nourishing, but you can eat them. <laughs> That's enough hardware news. Let's get on to something different. <laughs> Let's get on to a different kind of hardware. This, this time, it's not a GPU, it's the CPU. Yes, you probably heard the other big thing out this week was the 7000 series um, AMD Ryzen CPUs. AM5. And uh, we have the link to the Ars Technica review here. So uh, hot right now. They they seem to Back agree with just about everyone else. It's like, yeah, the performance is really nice uh, and... Uh, Apparently, AMD is going to support the AM5 socket for, for about as long as they did with AM4. And all of the um, the CPUs, at least the ones that they released, the 7950, uh, 7900, mm. 770, and the uh, 760, um, all of those have uh, built-in GPU, GPUs. They're not Okay, now as- I got a real question right here. I'm looking at this. None of these chips, none of these chips come, I guess that's grammatically correct if you squint. Um the Ryzen Seven. Of, I'm looking at the box sizes. What the fuck's up with the, like the what? What extra is in there? A hand job or what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so appar- apparently, like very few of them are actually coming with add-in fans. You're gonna no, have to none, go. of them, none of them. None yeah. of them. So none why? Them. What's the difference between the box? <laughs> I guess it's the more premium box for the extra, you know, feel that your <laughs> okay. your <laughs> All right. I, you know, your seven hundred dollars processor is uh, actually worth the seven hundred dollars. But yeah, it is uh, the the big thing, and you probably saw this is that normal operating temperature under normal conditions with a um, three sixty rad uh, on top of the CPU, uh, they get up to ninety five Celsius. Yes, 95 Celsius. But Pedro, uh, I have a 360 rod. <laughs> well, that's it's probably going to boost well above uh, 5 gigahertz if you have the 360 rad, but mm. it's always going to be hitting 
95 Celsius. That's what it was designed to do. That was AMD's decision. It's like, yes, we're going to run it at 95, 90-ish, 95. And you're going to get as much performance as the cooler that you have on it will let you have it. I think it was uh, Paul's Hardware that did the test with the Be Quiet uh, Dark Rock 2, which is the teeny tiny one uh, with about about the size of the uh, Hyper 212. And yeah, he lost a considerable uh, amount of performance instead of uh, the uh, 7600X boosting all the way up to 5.4 gigahertz. It was only boosting to 5.2. I get, oh, I get no, it. throw it out. I, I mean, <laughs> if, 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 if you live in like Scandinavia or somewhere cold, this is this is great. If you live in somewhere hot, maybe give this generation a pass. Wait for the 8000 series uh, yeah. so that you don't get melted. Like you don't end up looking like Odo by the end of so, a gaming I mean, session. I mean, you got to keep that in mind. I mean, these guys, I mean, they're designed to do this. They can happily run at temperatures that would signal cooling failure in the current gen of AMD mm-hmm. CPUs. Which is kind of shocking. Jordan, do you, do you think AMD's finally done it? Do you think uh, this was uh, just uh, an inside job to make sure that they could finally make replacement for the Hyper 212? They made a CPU that the Hyper 212 couldn't handle. Maybe, uh, maybe. It can. It's just going to throttle itself a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but but here, here's the thing. I said it before. I'll say it again. This is all well and good. I have no intention of upgrading my CPU. I don't want to buy a new motherboard. I don't want to buy a new RAM. The the 7000s I want to hear about from AMD are those RX 7000s, which is mm-hmm. going to be a fucking confusing naming convention. It is. Good 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 job on that AMD. We, you want the 7000 or the 7000? We want to put out a, when it comes to like upgrading your CPU. It's kind of like you're almost like even, you know, we all are going to say, "Well, it's for rendering in my VMs," and which none of that's the case. It's for you. It's for my penis. Yeah, like my daily driver for video games is effectively a Gen 1 Ryzen 1600. And I mean, it's in terms cool of, yeah, uh, together, IPC, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, it does 1080p 60 gaming just fine. And you, both of you, have much better like IPC performance mm. and all that. They're like, wh- wh- how far back? would you need to go for this is because these are, they're not exactly cheap but like when does this make sense like hmm you know it's time for an upgrade i it, think it, if right now is the time for an upgrade to like cap out as much as yeah. your if you have an x570 motherboard like myself like jordan mm-hmm. now is the time to probably think it's like yeah that 5950x or the 5900x or the 5800x 3d those are the ones that are looking really good because you already have the motherboard you already have the ram and you don't have to spend but a stupid amount of money on ddr5 ram if you're if yeah. you're on uh, if you're on an if you're on an older Intel system, I think this definitely makes sense. But if you're already currently in AMD, yeah, like Pedro's mm-hmm. saying, yeah, un- un- unless you have like first gen Threadripper, this is probably not going to be. <laughs> yeah, if you're on a purchase. different platform and you're looking at AM5, going, maybe I want to ride that particular boat out. By all means, but yeah, yeah. If, you, if you're if you're on AM4, yeah, stick stick with AM4 for now. Yeah, because you gotta you gotta look at that, man. I mean, but maybe you just get the itch though, because if you get the itch, like, hey, I want to do a you know scorched well, earth clean PC build because it's gonna require new RAM, it's gonna require new motherboard. Yeah. And uh, you know, but then again, this is always a hard thing because, like Jackbox, I popped that uh fifty six hundred G into a B three fifty. It worked just fine. BIOS was wonky as all. But, you know, that, I eventually just upgraded the motherboard. But. That AM4 support for as long as the the AMD had AM4 going strong, that's going to mm-hmm. probably <laughs> going to bite them in the ass because they're going to want to move and people are going to go, fucking what? Well, well you the, see, I, I, mean, that, that, I that want was, that, that was longevity, what they were doing. though, man. See, I fucked up and got Threadripper when I should have fucked up and got Epic. So I'm going to correct that mistake. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to overcorrect. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's... It it, 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 it it is what it is. But, you know, if you can't get your hands on a new processor, well, you can still on, play. On, the, I, I still want to, we need to address well, one thing, though, because everyone's talking about um, these CPUs run too fucking hot. Mm-hmm. They do. Uh, I said the same shit about Intel CPUs. They run too fucking hot because at the end of the day, 90C is 90C being dumped into your damn room. I don't <laughs> care if you're doing it on air. I don't care if you're doing it on water. Uh, how's that uh, AMD 8120? Uh, 8150 50 yeah uh it's still it's still keeping the room warm 
Like that's not even a joke. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do live no. in Canada, so you so, so probably to, nice. To, to, to put it into perspective, when I was living in uh, my little shoebox apartment, mm-hmm. I would in the winter I would position the computer right next to the open door. I would open the door to like the minus fucking twelve degree weather outside, <laughs> and I would not feel a damn thing. Because my 8150 was, I needed the outside to cool the fucking room down. That's how bad it was. <laughs> These are things you need to keep in mind, especially if you've been living that AM4 life for a long time. Like Indeed. you're used to like 60 being critical and normally being able to keep everything, you know, in the like, mid 40s. It goes up to 70 if you're like hammering on the CPU all at 100% for a while, like you're rendering something. Oh. Yeah. Here's something oh, I want to talk about. Watch a YouTube or, video or, on, or, on Bulldozer. Right. <laughs> um, or, you know, playing video games on it. Um, yep. Now, here's a question. A lot of the uh, heat sinks are going to require a shim to make yeah, it spacing. Plates. Are you ready? Everyone at home, are you prepared for the influx of comments of people who skipped that step, bought their new AMD CPU, put it in with their old heat sink, leaving a nice gap between the heatsink cold plate and the CPU and complaining it's about outrageously height, high. Isn't it? No, you They're... need it. Nope. It's the height issue, which is what you need the adapter for. So it's oh, right. uh, Yeah. The new mounting Ooh. thing actually mounts. Yes. Uh-huh. I saw the Noctua mounting yep. one. Yes, Outside yes, 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 yes. of that, it's going to fit perfectly on. So you're thinking ahead here. <laughs> yes. oh, I didn't, I didn't read. See, Pedro didn't even know this. I mean, I'm sure you knew it just wasn't immediately coming to mind for you, but yeah, I've seen the Noctua announcement, but that was, yeah. <laughs> you take your old heatsink off, you put it on. Doesn't ever occur to you that it's not even touching the CPU. <laughs> you know yeah. this is going to happen. It's going to be entertaining. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. For, for me, I'm always looking for like a little bit of like thermal goop that co- spreads out the side. But I guess if you're, yeah. on a, if you're using a thermal pad, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Or maybe you got it just right because you didn't see any goop come out. Maybe. Yeah. I I don't I don't I don't believe that I don't I don't trust myself to have that level of competence. Yes, <laughs> I look forward so, to the but, videos. Now, you know what? If you, if you can't buy a new CPU, you can always play your video games on Stadia. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, right. right? <laughs> yeah. So, it. oh yeah, Stadia has killed. Period. Yeah. So Google. Uh, this comes from uh, Gizmodo. Uh, yeah. The the rumor the rumors is true. Does Stadia is dead? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, they they said that uh, they're going to be phasing it down in the next couple of months. Uh, they're offering full refunds for all of the game purchases and hardware, which means I guess the money they made from subscriptions was more than enough to cover that. Um, but only the refunds are only as uh, Google Store credit, not ah, actual money. Well, of, of course, it, itchy and scratchy dollars, which you can go spend mm-hmm. on the Play Store for other long-term purchases. But, you know, we, we, we've, we've been saying it's coming. It's this this weird, annoying, self-fulfilling prophecy where Google keeps killing all of their projects that people actually like, and then they put out a project that actually requires long-term prospects, and people are like, no, Google, you haven't had long-term projects that you keep alive that people use, so we're not going to buy it. And so nobody buys it, and the thing fails, and they're like... What? Why did this happen? Um, there's and there are all sorts of issues. People had problems porting it, uh, porting stuff to Stadia. Uh, Google has not been great with the communication. Uh, there was uh, someone on Twitter had uh, had a great take on it where it was. Um, to be fair, Google Stadia faced terrible odds in the past three years, having to deal with <laughs> a global <laughs> pandemic forcing people to turn to online entertainment and a video cards and console shortage, creating high demand for alternatives. If only they hit the market at a better time. <laughs> I like that. I'm unkilled by Google with the auto scroll on, and I'm like. Eight percent down the page. Yeah, it, it's it's still going. Yeah. yeah so, like, th- this reputation from Google is well earned, and I I kind of hate the, it's like the whole Argus cancel thing. I I, <laughs> yep. I hate that they're like people are just not even giving it a chance. They're like, yeah, it's gonna die, it's gonna die, it's gonna die. But then you know when Google turns around and does shit like this, you're like, well, I mean, that's what's to be expected. Right? Well, I think it's it was not more like that they're um, doing anything to buck the trend. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it had more to do with Google coming out with it. Go back and watch the Stadia launch video with all this cool shit that uh, Stadia was going to be delivering on, and none of it was ever implemented in Stadia to date, to date at it being killed. Like, all this marketing hype shit, that's not what they were able to fucking deliver. Why? Because it's Google. I don't have any sympathy for anyone because it's a Google product. Now, I've had my Google experience. My Google experience was buying that damn Nexus 10. 
you know, half a grand for a fucking tablet that got a year of support. And, and I was like, right, this is Google. And I learned that a long time ago. Like, if you get anything from Google, you're like, hmm, it'll probably die. I'm not doing victory laps. I'm not. But we all knew this was coming. I think everybody secretly knew, even if you subscribed to Stadia. Because the ridiculousness of the entire business model of like, so do I just like get game? No, you got to buy your games again. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. See, that, also, a lot of people, also, a lot of people tapped out right at that. That doesn't make any sense part. Some people powered through it though, Jordan. You don't even get to keep the games either. That's yeah. that's the thing. Like you're, not, you're buying you, you, a non-perpetual license for a thing that you can't at, transfer at, at at full price because it's not like yeah. they were they were marking those down. No, you had to pay sixty dollars for a AAA game if you're in Canada. That's eighty dollars for a game that you don't even own. And you know you can make the argument that's a lot of what's on Epic. That's a lot of what's on Steam right now. But this is this is at least at the very at the very least with those you had the binaries on your system. Yeah. You mm -hmm. maybe had a chance to reverse engineering this if you were a clever programmer. With Stadia? No, not even. This is gone. And I'll even, yeah, Don, you bring up a good thing. Uh, well, no, it was uh, North Ranger. Negative latency. Remember that shit? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it, it was so, so like, uh, you can join in the middle latency. of games with other people. Like, all this but, shit that they promised that they just fucking never even mentioned again, much less delivered. And so Google did a good job killing Stadia by itself. It's 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 sad too because they actually had pretty good tech compared to compared to like other cloud streaming services. Their stuff was a lot more responsive than say GeForce Now or and, Steam streaming. Like, but GeForce Now is so much a better product than Stadia. Like it is because current, it uses yeah. the accounts that you already have. I'm just talking about like account. it's your. I'm talking about account. like straight up performance, <laughs> fidelity, quality, being able to stream and getting 4K streams and things like Stadia just never got around to yet because again it's Google. And like uh, this would, I would have a different take if, if Stadia was like this great superior product. It's barely been fucking held together this entire time. It never had to like step up thing. And also Google, I know you can use the Stadia controller wired if you plug it in, but you need to really release a fucking hardware patch. Um, software Enable patch. the Bluetooth. Yep. Yes. Yeah. No, so. uh, the, the, they're giving refunds for the hardware. So I don't think they're going <laughs> to. Okay, then yeah. internet, you know what? You'll never be able to hack and reverse engineer yeah, that like, controller. Never. I, I mean, you, you, you say the Nexus 10 drop support, again, uh, support drop from Google, but like the community picked that up pretty quickly. So, well, yeah. it already had, um, yeah. Well, like the the Cyanogen, Cyanogen mod. Yeah. yeah C mod back in the day. AOSP, I guess, was around too. Yeah. Uh, what do we have up next? Stadia is dead. Zero, oh, yeah. Zero AD. Like... Imagine a world. Yeah. Well, you know, it's that time of the year when Zero AD comes out with a new uh, alpha because you know, talk about perpetual early access. These guys have been in early access since the dawn of time. But Zhuangzi, um, the not point twenty six or alpha 26 is out and it has some neat stuff. The Han civilization is now a playable faction. And uh, with that, they added two China based maps. Uh, they have a bunch of several. They have a bunch of gameplay tweaks allowing for better micro and macro management of individual of like squads and troops if you're into that you can read those notes the links to all this is in the show notes they also got uh 26 new audio tracks uh including some china themed ones for their brand new faction and maps so you know they're they keep on chugging on like it it still it still looks like 080 which is still pretty good uh yeah i'm gonna keep them at it I'm always happy to see this. Uh, new maps. Uh, one of the maps now contains the longest river in Asia. Now, how much would you pay? Absolutely nothing. It's a free game. It's brilliant. We always like dragging this as a shining pinnacle of open source software development. They added player search field into the lobby. So apparently there's enough people playing this online to justify doing that, which I think that's great. You can track down your buddies a little quicker. You can also scale your GUI. It's resizable. And again, look at that river. Ah, so much river. So much. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it is still a very good looking game and if it weren't for the fact that i oh yeah it's a real time strategy okay i'll 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 look at the pretty pictures that's for, that, for, that for rts yeah <laughs> oh, so I, I, lo I love that genre of game oh <laughs> i always is it want for X or rts <laughs> no it's rts baby okay there's no fucking forex. <laughs> no, no, the, 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 no. You, you, there's like civilization build, right? Like you actually. Oh uh, man, have to, there uh, might be a switch in there somewhere, but I mean, yeah, zero eight is an RTS. I've I've always well, seen yeah, it like, as but, an RTS. So, yeah, um, yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, like, I, I I always thought it like sort of occupies the middle ground. Yeah, where, yeah, like the, some the, sharpies out and draws max grids on the monitor. <laughs> yeah, you could do uh, some some hexes. 
I mean, forex doesn't imply hexes. You could do it with grids. You could do it with like a soft grid. Well, you control matter. triangles if you want. And you 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 expand. You exploit and whatever the other two X's is Xbox 360 and Xbox One X. That's that's the core principle I think the, of every uh, forex. Big game. thing to drive in is uh, it's real time, which yes is best. It's the right way to play a game. Um, I'm just glad that they keep on chugging these on. Uh, I always want to go back and play this, but the uh, startup time for this is like getting your civilization up and going before you can really go in and reckonate whoever you're mm-hmm. playing against like that lead up time is like well over an hour which is kind of hard to do it's yeah it, it, it's one of those games uh the only one of those that i did actually play back in the day was uh, age of empires 2 like everyone else mm. and yeah the, about an hour unless you did the um Zerg rush and immediately <laughs> rush oh, the yeah, other person's the, the, thing. The pro, pro, pro rush, you set up a pylon and a, and yeah. a plasma cannon on their base and then just fuck them up. See, yeah, yeah. now I want an option to uh, like play by Usenet. Oh, do, do, they, do they have play by mail support in here? I think they do. <laughs> they, they might, man. Oh, man. Well, you know, get, get a dev on. We can ask him about him. Coming up next, I put a hex on you because you're mine, then. Six is the best number. That's why we're throwing chairs this week at Hex of the Lich. Welcome to the Chairquisition, where we take a game, run it on three different Linux distributions. Well, like two, real- realistically. I don't know. Custom, two different, very different custom fedoras. Custom kernel, basically- custom what base. Is a yeah, kernel. Custom- yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the u- user space is a little screwy. We, you know what? Three different distributions, three different sets of hardware. Then we give you a synthesized score based on our hexy lawn chairs, our sexy hexy lawn chairs. One chair means that's crap. Four chairs means that's amazing. Uh, like I said, this week we're taking a look at Hex of the Lich by Clobster Games, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks US. What is it? Hex of the Lich is a spell craft- crafting turn-based roguelike. Forge spells from hexes and find new ones along the way. Gain powerful artifacts that enhance your abilities. Clear dungeons that are filled with bouncing blobs, eldritch horrors, and otherworldly aliens. Can you break the Hex of the Lich? We gotta thank Clobster Games for uh, Zoidberging us some keys. And I guess this week I get to go first. So on Fedora 35, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 DTI, it launches out of the box. I guess I got to say we got to do it in three minutes or less. Um, yeah, you can choose whether it's in window mode or not, but there's no way to set a resolution. I tried to force it via the prefs file. It ignores it. So no, no points there. Uh, the person, the visual presentation, I actually really like all of the monster designs are distinct. Uh, and the designs are, and like, yeah, you, there's there's no character blindness. Everything looks different. Uh, it's very, very clear that everything is a different enemy depending on how it looks. The soundtrack, however, that's annoying beeps and boops. And it got annoying to the point where I got it. It got muted and replaced with a podcast where I was reviewing stuff for wizards and shit. Um, Control-wise, click, click, boom. It seems pretty touch-oriented. It's not on the Play Store or the iOS Store, so... I guess this is just mouse time only. Fun-wise, it's not a bad little roguelike. Uh, I like the hexagon-based strategy games, and since Armello is dead to me, I've been looking for something to fill the gap. This is not that, but it's still pretty good. I do like the deck building aspect, the hex building aspect. The position based combat's also very fun. You get a lot of different enemies and a lot of them like actually don't hurt you, but if you get near stuff, then they do. So being very aware of your position and how like things are next to you is very crucial. Um, And you can get into a bad position pretty quick. Uh, But damn, is it swingy? It is very much a roguelike in the sense of like, if you do not get good spells for your starting shit, you kind of just got to feed yourself to the meat grinder and pray that uh, you either get some better stuff or you throw your character out and go for something new. Um, and yeah, the game doesn't really hold your hand a lot at all. Uh, there's a very brief tutorial where it says, here's how you check all the stats for everything. And here's what they mean. Have fun. No real guidance on like how to play the game, what sort of strategies you should adopt. It's very trial and error. It's very organic, unless you're hitting up uh, forums or watching YouTube videos. Um, yeah, and to, to that point, the UI is decent for parsing out enemy stats. All the information is there, but I feel the layout probably could be improved a little bit to like better make it clear what things are doing, how far they move. Maybe a little bit more telegraphing of like where they're going to move because a lot of the times it's like move around on the screen. You get one move, they get all the moves. So get, get some, some better information flow, I think, would do the game a uh, lot of favors. I had fun with it, though. I, I stopped playing with it after 
after 45 minutes, got up, took a break. I'm like, I should play for the rest of the hour. And then I kind of lost track of time. So I was, I was enjoying it, even though I was getting my ass kicked. I got about, I almost got to the second boss, but I can't get past it because there are giant blobby things that eat my lunch. So I'm going to give it three cheers. Yes, I uh, managed to beat the second boss once, and that was it. Uh, but yeah, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the uh, RX 6700XT on Nobara 36, uh, it launches out of the box. It holds wood for a 2560 by 1440, as it should. The uh, graphics are perfectly serviceable, all Though they could be better, but more on that later. Uh, the sound is certainly there. I didn't find it that annoying, uh, but it, it's not what you'd call enthralling either. Uh, and the the thing that kind of stuck out to me on a technical level is, why does this game take up one gigabyte? And then I remembered, oh yeah, Unity. So, yeah. Uh, and the fun. Well, I've said it once and I'll say it again. If you're a lone indie dev or a very small team and you want to make a game around a um, specific mechanic double or even triple down on it. Make sure, focus on that mechanic and make it the best that it can be. What I didn't actually expect, which uh, Hacks of the Lich very much surprised me with, was complementing that mechanic with stuff that they saw in other games that they thought would work well, like the Slate Aspire style level progression and the rewards at the end of the combat. It is very bare bones in how they implemented that stuff, but that's fine. It's like uh, the levels are just, okay, it's either enemies or it's a store. And the end is like you get things to upgrade your spells or a new spell. Cool. But that's all right. That's perfect. What isn't all right is the lack of feedback for the spells. Like, yes, you can see that you have this really powerful spell and it lays out all of that dynamite that deals like five damage to anything it touches. That's great. But the sound is so piddly, and the graphics is like, there's very little particle effects for the things. I'm casting Ultra Beam, and there's no feedback whatsoever. That's my one complaint with it. It's... It, it could be improved. The mechanics are solid, but yeah, the audiovisual presentation could have been so much better. So it gets three chairs for me. <laughs> All right, let me see if I take a crack at it. Over here, on Debian, testing, running on a 1920X AMD 3060 powered box of business. You know what? Everything launched. No problems. Nothing to report. It does have those, as Jordan pointed out, that basic bitch Unity setting of like, yeah, full screen, not full screen. You get a volume slider and sound slider. That's it. Or anything else, too bad. Including controller support. It did load with the default settings for the uh, keyboard mouse simulation, which you just immediately cut the controller off like a normal person when you're done with that. But far as functioning, it's got it down. It works. Full screen. UHD. No problem. I'm assuming it was 60. I'm assuming my 3060 was able to crush this juggernaut. Let's talk about the fun because I'm not a big fan of um, this genre, man. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, like even right out of the bat. Now, they do attempt to have a tutorial right at the beginning. Which, did either of you notice that that fucking continue button's in a different spot on each block of text in the tutorial? Yes, it, it's higher up, then it's lower down. Lower down, it's lower up. up, up. <laughs> okay, fine. I wasn't alone in that. Uh, it was quite the read. It was uh, more like a brief info dump followed by the old have at fucko, which I did. You know, hey. And if you're unfamiliar with this type of game, you're going to be lost, son. I mean, lost. Uh, even people like Pedro and Jordan, you're like, I got to feel this out having a good uh, background understanding of it now i spent a good 50 minutes trying to figure out what was going on i clicked on things click on a bad guy sometimes this was followed by a position change as jordan said sometimes it was followed by a bunch of position change i'm like i don't know what's then i just be dead now my advanced strats only held out for like maybe the first couple of maps first two maps after that not even joking i got spite noped on my first it might have been my second turn and he says, you were dead. You were killed by a thing. I'm like, I didn't even have an opportunity to fuck that up. And I, I died, man. Okay, fine. You got the chair still up, by the way. Uh, okay. Do you not like the chairs? <laughs> no, I don't. I hate them. I've, I've been meaning to tell you for 10 years, man. I fucking right. hate them. Too late. Now, I never figured out what I was uh, doing 
while claiming the rewards. We saw that screen right at the beginning when Pedro was clicking. He's like, you can pick money or you can pick your upgrades. You not, from, not from lack of trying. I was clicking through that and I never could figure out exactly because every time I thought I had it sorted, I click OK. He's like, you've not claimed a reward, which ultimately led me like, fuck the reward. Then. Just, all right, fine. I tried, gentlemen. I tried. So uh, the game functions. That's all I'm going to say. And, uh, and for our audio listeners, I will put up two chairs. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> he did it. Yeah, uh, it's it's not bad. I'm not sure I'm not sure the price tag is like appropriate for this type of game. I think maybe 10 bucks is yeah. probably a good asking price. 15 is a little much, for, especially demo. for what you're getting. Hey, it's got a yeah. demo. Look at it does that. Have, it does have a demo, so you can try before you buy it. And yeah, a, a, a lot of it is just going to be like gameplay mastery. That's where most of the um, most of the uh, the actual content of the game is. Because like, e- like e- even like the maps themselves are pretty samey. Like regardless, there's usually there's usually like two or three variations at a yeah, given level. Do you want to hit the store first, or do you want to yeah. fight more enemies before you get to the store? That, that's yeah that's that's, that's your kind of your choice, choice. <laughs> yeah and and also also just like pray that you get decent stuff i was yeah. i was abusing summons to high hell because that was the only way i could keep alive oh, the terror crab is just the best you get the terror crab as a starting spell you're good yeah you're set. <laughs> i was um slinging out magic missiles and i had that one that turned the baddies into uh, like helpers ah mm-hmm. yeah whatever that was and to Charm. your point whoever brought it up uh <laughs> That background music, that sound loop is only like twelve seconds long. Yeah, it's it's not great. It's pretty it's pretty grating. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know. Wait wait till it goes on sale. Give it a, pick it up if you're into uh, if you're into roguelikes. If you're into um, yeah, if you're into hex strategy stuff, I think I think it's pretty well done. Do you agree, Pedro? Yeah, it is actually uh, surprisingly well done. There's a lot of depth to the one mechanic, which was like the deck building, the spell casting. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that does it for the chairquisition. Coming up next, find out all of Pedro's personal information when we post all his documents on the internet. I understand that sometimes Linux Gamecast Weekly may not be to everyone's taste. I, I get it. I do. But I think after 10 years and change, we've probably done something that really got under your skin or you really really enjoyed Pedro that Mateus, if we haven't pissed somebody off we're not doing our job yeah <laughs> there was a time that we were doing that on a weekly basis gotta, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we gotta fight against this echo chamber <laughs> Uh, at some point, uh, Are, everyone... Wait, we gotta uh, fight against the echo chamber. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Jordan and myself, we're the counterbalance to your incessant positivity. Okay. In the chairs, <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> in the chairs, I tend to be the one who's the most lenient because I like we're video games. balance to the force, <laughs> bitch. This, 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 this is totally not a free-for-all about who can go the darkest. No, Absolutely no. not. I just take it the high ground, man. <laughs> But yes, chances I, are uh, is, is we've, we've at some point said or done something that you felt like you had to get your own two cents in, and we have a way for you to do that. You can absolutely do that. Go to LucasGameCast.com. You hit the contact button that's on the nav bar at the top. There's some caveats that you may want to read, and then there's the um, actual submission form at the bottom. Just pick LGC Weekly as your topic and send us your message. It's... Uh, your email address needs to resolve, so you can use bob at bob.com. No, no, no. Make, make sure you make it all spammy, and make sure you, that I can tell that you're manually doing it, because, man, reading the spam logs is some motherfucker just hammering on trying to get... Oh, I want you to go purchase bob.com so that you can send us an email from bob.com. Bob at bob.com, please. What about bob.bob.tld? You could probably get a dot .bob, yeah. I think that's kind of open season now, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you just throw enough money I mean, out of like, fine. He's probably well, already I, I, taken. I, 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 mean, I mean, like, a, a TLD is, like, what, half a million? A million, depending on what you're getting? So I don't know. Depends on whose kids you get. Um, <laughs> uh, how many find millions the of children? I don't know. I don't, I don't know where you can get a line on you half a million, million kids. <laughs> kids. Not touching that. Uh, all right. Nope. You better not. So, Dimitri has written in. Written in? Wrote in? 
communicated right. to us? Yes, uh, they, they, they say, hello, Henry Mustachio Paedro. I need Paedro. advice. Paedro. I need advice. I need to buy refurbished laptops. I will be putting Linuxes on it. Ideally, I want to have it also does doze in VM. I don't care how screen looks like as long as I can connect with Wi-Fi and type in IP adder. Can you give me advices? Will be used as basic troubleshooting tool to help older people's looks and batteries don't matters. Um, Apparently, we got emailed by Toki Wartooth. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, like the obvious recommendation is find like the X two forties, X two fifty ThinkPads. They are very cheap, like the secondhand ones. Uh, and if you don't want, if you really don't care whether or not the battery is working properly, even cheaper. Uh, and yeah, that's. <laughs> Don't go for the Barbie laptops. That right. was going to be a mark. Oh, come on, come on. Go, at least Dude. go for like the UHD Barbie laptop. Dude, Don't there's get, like, a the higher than non-zero one. chance that any of these that you purchase will come with free bonus glitter. <laughs> How yes. many of these do you think Steve had a hand in designing? Uh, let's see the darkest looking one. That one's pretty dark. Uh, <laughs> that's a tiny screen. But Wait, yeah, like, like four by like three. This one's sixteen by laptops. nine. Though, man. Come on, oh, man. Like, yeah. yeah, that's sixteen by nine. So. <laughs> business laptops are usually a good chance because companies get rid of them in bulk and they just want to get rid of them so they'll price them pretty cheap uh so yeah like dell latitudes old dell latitudes hello 30, kitty clamshells yeah uh 30 40 bucks easily uh running the windows vm you're probably <laughs> not going to have a very good experience with the windows That's vm but it will run what them. i thought it was at first um <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> USB powered. All right. It's a Hello Kitty magic one. No, it's a mouse. No, it's a Hello Kitty computer mouse wire offers corporate pink cute work laptop. <laughs> Inventory number nine. Number nine. <laughs> that's the less, that's the less popular uh, follow up to Mambo number five. It really is. <laughs> no, I, I, never mind. I I just realized how dangerous of a search this was to have up on screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd probably echo Pedro's sentiment. Like, use ThinkPads, old old refurbs, probably the way to go. And plus, yeah. they're so cheap. I mean, you're you're giving them, it's like, uh, you, you think about how they treat them, especially uh, people who are in their 70s and 80s right now are going to treat laptops, I'm just saying I'm overgeneralizing, with the same amount of disdain, respect, and responsibility that, you know, an eight-year-old is. <laughs> It's, it's this random moon device that they're occasionally going to use and like it might get tossed in a corner. How many times have you been over? Like, well, why is this under uh, here with all this see, stack on uh, it? The, um, my experience, uh, older people tend to do, take care of laptops, overly take care of laptops because they'll put them on a pedestal and go, ooh, I have to be very careful about this. My, my grandfather's experience. laptop was covered in tape. <laughs> yep. Just covered in tape. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately the moral of this story the best laptop to get somebody is uh just buy him a used chromebook and be done with it a get, windows get, vm get, that that was one of the requirements too damn bad you don't get it <laughs> you can you know you know you can get one of those ibm mips workbooks th 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 think books whatever the hell they're called what do you need a windows vm for mips that's uh, that was dimitri's use case i don't know <laughs> I mean, I can make shit up too. It's like, and it needs wings. <laughs> it needs Wi-Fi. It needs to be able to run the Windows VM. That hence, yeah, the the X two forty, for example, it comes with Haswell. It's not, you know, the best in terms of IPC, but it's very good uh, IPC for the fourth generation, and you can get KVM running on it pretty well. And if you max it out at eight gigs of RAM, I think that's the max. You can give the VM four and have the other four for the host. Yeah, and and anything that has like uh, what was it VMX or AT or mm -hmm. VTX. Oh, or hang on, thank you, Don. The Windows three sixty five online VM, baby. You can stream that Windows. I think that yeah. costs money. <laughs> so does this laptop. It's gonna cost yeah, more money the laptop's than this laptop. Probably cheaper than Microsoft three six five. But see, yeah. we're gonna save money well, so, by getting a Chrome. <laughs> although, I, I, I guess if you get it with Windows installed and it comes with a Windows license, then you don't have to pay for another one. Or you I can just install know. Windows and never activate it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs>
But if you're give, if you're giving this away, yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, whatever. Who cares? It's a Windows laptop. It's, it's a Windows VM. Old. It's not even the laptop itself is apparently going to yeah, be running from, Linux and Windows and VM. <laughs> restore, restore points. Cop, copy the the VMDK. Yeah, It'd yeah, be fine. And again, you never Take get down to the like core point. Do you like this person or not? Because this can <laughs> heavily weigh one way or the other. You you could get them like one of those cakes that looks like an ultra realistic laptop, and then when they open it up, they just get a handful of cake. It's full of balloons. I mean, balloon cake, sure. Balloon cake. <laughs> con- con- condom cake. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Drug smuggling cakes, yes. <laughs> They're like, damn it, sir, we knew this cake up your ass was full of balloons. <laughs> How, get, getting getting it up, the entire cake up there is like quite impressive in and of itself. We're a bit confused why you took the extra step to putting the balloons inside the cake, but here we are. And- it's, you know, it, it's the surprise. It's a surprise. It's not a happy meal. It's a cake, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, last time I was allowed to do wedding vows. Um, beautiful people on that bombshell. We're going to cue the music. You can always find this nonsense kicking off at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you want to come hang out with us and get spoiled to death on House of the Dragons, Rings of Power, Come join us. Become a patron. Uh, Death Note or above. Jordan and I will be back next week spoiling the absolute snot out of episode 7 of both of those. For the first 30 minutes, we try to get it done, and Pedro's going to join us for the pre-pre-super shows and kind of get wound up for this show that'll be back right here on Twitch at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out with us on Tuesday for Track Mania. we got some fresh tracks going down. Wednesday, weekly, daily Wednesdays, Thursdays, back for Brad with Jordan, myself, and whoever is brave enough to come join us. Friday, back again with Track Media Rounds Match, Linux loving miscreants all together. And again, we'll be back here next Saturday. Oh, at Ben Stone on Twitter and at Ven on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan. You can follow my exploits of smuggling cakes up my ass at the Burning Fool on Twitter, <laughs> or get the live live streamed updates at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. The Tadurkin of cakes himself. Yeah. I don't know. Now I'm imagining like a Canadian <laughs> turkey filled with cake. Uh, I, I, probably I, delicious. I have, lots and lots of I poutine on the side. And now I have ass cakes. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> But yeah, uh, at unaccounted for on Twitter, that's the uh, best way to get in touch. Or uh, if you can type the upside down T on Discord, it's unaccounted for with the upside down T. Uh, pound zero one two three. <laughs> that's pound some credits. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so hot. Oh my God. So hot right now. Literally, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> I'm dying. I Please get me some water. Yeah. <laughs> gotta thank our advisors. We gotta thank Omega. So we gotta thank Arthur and we gotta thank our executive producers. They are Barbara M. Scott Michaud, Tom McCass, Mike G, Mike T. Drummer, Kahaku, George Pebble, Tomaj, and Unoid. All right, little Nikki fans, Abstraction, and Super Death Stoat. That's uh, that's all the one. beautiful sea monsters yes. <laughs> for Nut Rudder X, Machina, Truggy, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, System T, Justin, Frosty, Vera Tenuta, Plenty of Death Notes, Nova K, yes. Basil, Chad, Romeo, Romeo Marcin, 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 Renee, Dirty Dean, Dodger, Cheesy Bacon, Kaiser A, Stein, Jerling's <laughs> Jordan, Hellman, Dog, Lord Maka, Joanna, <laughs> Gronk and Alonka, North Ranger, Craig H, Todd, Smash Legion, Alan, H- Dirty, two more, we can unlock the gates of hell. <laughs> Fraso, Chris G, Michael W, Wait, the Gal, AJ, Double, Zoom, AB, AJ, Designer, Twice, I just noticed that. <laughs> Sacred Egg, oh, hi, Mark. Do we add, uh, do we add Unoid to the uh, Find Upstanding Catabulls here? Uh, we are about to find out. I'm 100% certain <laughs> that that will happen. There it is, hey! yes. <laughs> we just got to track down the markers. There we go. Good job, Markers man. next week, it. everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>